There is such a huge range of accessories available for the Red Komodo. So no matter what rig you want to get set up for your Komodo, there will be something out there. This is the first video of a three part series where we'll be looking at the available accessories for the Komodo. This video will be focusing on cages, side handles and breakout boxes. Part two will be on lenses and adapters and part three will cover batteries, media, monitoring and audio. Anyway, let's get into it, starting off looking at the different cage options. There's such a huge range of rigging for the Komodo and each option has different pros and cons. This video is really just an overview of what those are. So if you're looking to build up a rig properly, I really suggest speaking with our team so we can help tailor and rig the perfect combination of accessories for your preference. Here, we will be taking a look at the different offerings from Tilter, Vocas, Wooden Camera, Small Rig, Takuto, Ignite Digi, 8SIN, GDU, Shape, and Bright Tangerine. One quick note on the design of the Komodo that's really worth knowing about is that on the bottom there is a quarter inch and 3 8 thread, which is great to see on a camera of this size. However, with some tripod plates, the threads are so close together that you can't use both threads at once. However, with a rig on the camera, you shouldn't run into this issue. GDU make a range of accessories for both DSMC2 and Komodo. These range from fancy port caps, batteries, rigging and side handles, which we'll look at in a bit. However, they offer two pieces of rigging for the Komodo specifically. These are the Timmy ribs and a monitor mount. The Timmy ribs are side mounted brackets for the Komodo, which are reversible and can mount on either side of the camera for mounting handles and other accessories using its range of quarter 20 threads as well as its three 3 8 16 anti-twist threads. This mounts to the side of the camera using two M4 screws, which I really wish were captive on the side plates. While producing this video, GDU have also released the sidearm for the Komodo. We haven't used it yet, but from what we've seen, this looks like a well-designed option for a minimalist side handle that also gives you a 15 mm rod mount on the bottom, which could result in some very lightweight setups. They also make a monitor mount that has been designed specifically for the Komodo. It can be mounted directly onto the camera body or onto the Komodo outrigger handle and you can adjust the tension of the bracket using the bolt system here. It has been designed for use with the SmoHD 5 series and the Portkeys BM5 but will work with most other monitors that have quarter 20 mount holes on the bottom of the monitor. It's decently affordable given its build quality and design. We will look more at Kipatai's offerings in part two of this series, but let's quickly look over their chin strap and teddy blocks. The chin strap is a mounting bracket that provides support for Kipatai's range of lens adapters and their revolver system, as well as mounting points along the side of the camera. It also has a thread at the bottom of it so you can mount a second screw when mounting the Komodo directly to a tripod plate. These side plates only have quarter 20 threads, but you can add ARRI locating 3.8 threads with their teddy block adapters. All in all, if you're picking up a Kipatai lens adapter, the chin strap could be a great way to go. One and Camera have produced a range of accessories for the Komodo and have broken their kits down into four versions, Base, Advanced and Pro, which is available in either V or Gold mount. We have the Pro V mount kit here, as this includes all of the accessories that come with the smaller kits and more. This rig consists of a 15mm base plate, a complete top mount kit, which has a top handle and monitor hinge, a battery slide pro v mount and two 15 mil rods which are 12 inches long this package is probably the most versatile kit out of the bunch and is very complete no matter how you want to rig the camera up you will be able to do this with their systems the nice thing about these accessories is that they open up the ability to be used with other accessories too from other brands if you need to as wooden camera have used a short top plate and a lws style bottom plate you can use it with most side plates, like the Timmy ribs and Zakuto, as well as most other V-Lock plates on the back. However, if you'd like to use the Kipatai revolver system with the wooden camera top handle, you'll need to use the riser plate, which is an optional extra, or you can use the included bolt to go through the outrigger handle. The LWS system brings your camera up to the correct height for 15mm mounted accessories. The way wooden camera has thought about lens adapter mounting is also great. On the bottom of the camera, you have this Arca Swiss plate with the hole here for using it with one of three different lens adapter support posts. This system means you can lock down any adapter that has a quarter inch thread on the bottom of it by positioning your camera for it and then screwing in the post. The B-Box wooden camera offers also allows you to rig it in a really nice way with this set of accessories. Honestly, this is a really nice system and probably the most universal out of the current options. Tilta have also produced one of the most complete ecosystems for Komodo, Though currently, one really crucial piece of the puzzle is currently not out yet. 
the advanced power distribution module, which we will talk about later. Similar to wooden camera, Tilter offers a range of kits that increase in size, all the way from A to E. We have the B set with us here today, which comes with the cage, a top handle, a cold shoe mount adapter, a cold shoe monitor mount, and both a Manfrotto and Arc quick release plate. The cage is attached to the body via the top and bottom M4 screws on the side and the top, which means you don't need to attach the bottom or top plate to use them. They are all independent of each other. One downside of the tilter cage is the compatibility with the standard Modern Film Tools Horseshoe I.O. top plate with rosettes, as well as red expander. The side cages will interfere with it, so you can't mount both at the same time. This limits you to either using the wooden camera B-Box or Tilter's advanced power distribution module, which isn't out yet. So if you're wanting to use an expander with Tilter's accessories, you'll need to plan what one you want to use. It's also worth noting that Tilter dovetails are not ARRI standard. Vocus have made a range of accessories for the Komodo that can fit nicely into their current ecosystem. The USB P15 Mark II is a solid universal shoulder mount that we recommend quite a bit. However, the shoulder pad may not be to most people's tastes, but this can be replaced with their gel version, which I find much nicer. They have released a specific mounting plate for the USB P for the Komodo, which can either come bundled with it or can be purchased separately if you already own a USB P. The more specific parts that Vocus have made for the Komodo are the cage, which consists of two side plates and a top and bottom plate, and a couple of top handles. The side plates can be used by themselves, but the top and bottom plates require the side plates to be used. The top plate is a touch on the larger side, but does feature loads of solid mounting points. One downside to the top plate is that it will not work with the Kipatai revolver. To do this, you'll need to mount it backwards, but this will cover the screen. But given that Vocas don't make a support for the revolver, I'm not sure I'd recommend a Vocas cage with the revolver anyway. When it comes to lens supports, Vocas have made supports for their PL mount or Canon's 0.71 focal reducer. These attach to the side plates and could be a really good option if you are using one of these adapters. Shape makes some nice kit. I especially like their handles and accessories that use their push button adjustment design. There are several different packages that Shape offer for the Komodo, but the key accessories that they have made specifically for the Komodo are the side and top plates, a 15mm lightweight base plate that will bring the Komodo to the correct height for matte boxes, and a range of power accessories. The side plates have a decent amount of mounting options and even a full size rosette. They can also be mounted without any other rigging needed. The top plate doesn't look like it will work with the revolver as it hangs over slightly. This is one of the only plates that has top mounted 15mm bar support built in, which could be handy. I like their top handle which can be used with this plate and they also offer a vertical cold shoe monitor mount which actually looks quite neat with the handle. Their rosette arms and handles are so nice, but they are a touch on the pricey side. Bright Tangerine have also released a really nice set of accessories for the Komodo. These are available as an essentials kit, base kit, advanced kit and expert kit. The expert kit comes fully loaded with everything you may need to rig up your Komodo, but you can buy the side and top plate kits separately. The rig has been designed to be quick and reliable and given Bright Tangerine's past products, it's not surprising that it's well thought out. They have also released a DJI dovetail, which is aimed to make transitions between gimbal and tripod setups faster. The dovetail is designed to be paired with the Komodo base plate. They have also released a range of supports for different lens mount adapters consisting of the following. One for the Canon 0.71 focal reducer, one for Vocas's RF to PL adapter, one for Metabones's RF to PL adapter, and one for the Kipatai revolver system. It is great to have options for these in this kit. These supports will require you to use the left field side plate kit and top rail or run stop top rail from Bright Tangerine 2. The run stop top rail adds a three pin RS in a functional low profile way as it converts to top pogos. This could be handy if you just need trigger and want to keep your rig stripped down. It also means you can use the back nine pin EXT port for something else such as a timecode and this plate for trigger without having to pick up a breakout box if all you need is timecode and trigger. Zakuto have also made a range of accessories that will fit into their existing range of rigging nicely. This consists of a cage and a base plate, as well as some dedicated rigs and kit for use with their EVFs. Currently, they make some of the better solutions for rigging EVFs onto the Komodo, so they're definitely worth taking a look at if you're wanting to do so. We really like the way they've designed their side plates, as they are NATO rails which also feature rosettes and ARRI locating pins, which is pretty impressive given their size. The overall design is pretty good, However, due to the long NATO at the top of the camera, it will not allow you to use the Kipatai revolver. 
Ignite Digi have made a name for themselves in making accessories related to gimbals and the keystone for Komodo is exactly that. It is a slightly larger form factor cage but this is for a reason. Ignite Digi have designed the keystone with their existing accessories which have all been designed to make your life easier when rigging cameras onto larger gimbals like the Ronin 2 and Moffy Pro. So if you're an owner op that frequently shoots with these gimbals and you want to build out the perfect rig for use with these gimbals primarily, this is the cage that needs to be at the heart of it. The Smorey cage is a decently affordable option that does exactly what you'd expect from a Smorey cage. It's decently well thought out with mounting points for other accessories all over it and rosettes on each side. However, it doesn't really integrate with other accessories for the Komodo. So unless you are looking for a basic and affordable cage, I think there are more versatile options out there. They have also introduced the 3045, which is a monitor mount that can be mounted on their cage or onto the Komodo directly using the mounting points on the top of the Komodo. Like the smaller cage, the 8 sin cage for the Komodo is also a very standard but well built cage. It is a three piece cage made from aluminium which attaches to the camera in six different positions. They also offer a range of other accessories which integrate with the cage well. So again, if you're after a basic setup, this could be a really nice option for you. When it comes to side handles, you can of course use any side handle you'd want to if you can mount it. So the ones we'll be looking at are more specifically designed for the Komodo. Red currently offers two handles specifically for the Komodo. These are the outrigger and the wing grip. The outrigger is a flexible and nicely shaped side handle for the Komodo that uses the pogo pins at the top of the camera to trigger via the record button on the top of the handle. It also allows you to fully adjust its angle for your preference. It also has two quarter inch threads on the top so you can still mount what you need to on top of the camera. The spacing is the same as the threads on the body so you can use accessories like monitor mounts that are designed for the Komodo. You can also use the wooden camera riser plate but we've made wooden camera aware that you need longer screws to get the riser onto the outrigger handle and they have now started to include screws for this with the risers. If you think the outrigger will fit into your overall rig and you can justify the price, it really is an incredibly solid option. Red also makes the wing grip. This is an affordable option side handle which really is just a piece of metal that protrudes out that you can grip onto. It's not that comfortable but does offer a range of mounting options for other accessories. I could see this being helpful in some scenarios but I think there are better side plates available and better side handles so it sits in this kind of weird position of doing both not quite as well as other options. GDU also offer a couple of options for side handles for the Komodo. These are the Derringer and the Stubby Cowboy. The Derringer handle requires a Timmy rib being attached to the side of the camera, which we mentioned earlier. You can't rotate the handle, but you can adjust its height to three different positions on the Timmy rib. The handle itself feels nice, but the limited angle means it's not quite as customizable ergonomically as other handles on the market. It also doesn't feature any start stop functionality, which is a big plus for the outrigger. The GDU Stubby Cowboy is slightly different to the Derringer as it uses rosette to mount the handle onto the side of the body, though it will still require a Timmy rib. This means that the handle doesn't quite sit as flush against the camera, but it also makes it more versatile as it's using rosette and allows you to rotate and adjust it, which could be better ergonomically for you. So overall, there is such a huge range of rigging options for the Komodo that it can seem like a bit of a minefield, and that's because it is. We think some options are better than others, and with some of the options out there, you can build pretty much any rig you want to, from extremely stripped back rigs, with just the basics for shooting handheld, to gimbals, just full studio configurations. There are options available for you. For the best recommendation, I would suggest getting in contact with us so we can recommend the exact configuration that will fit your needs. You can find contact details down in the description below, and while you're down there, let us know what your dream configuration for the Komodo would be. The Komodo can be controlled and monitored via Wi-Fi using the RED Control app. However, RED has also released the Komodo Link adapter, which uses the connections on the top of the camera to provide a USB-C port. This port can be used to directly connect your smartphone to it and provides a lag-free preview via the RED Control app. You will also be able to connect to the camera over Ethernet by using a USB-C to Ethernet adapter, which doesn't come with the link. This will allow you to control the camera over IP and even offload footage. However, at £349 excluding VAT, this is an expensive accessory, but for some, having the ability to connect to the Komodo over Ethernet could be very handy. And with the iPhone 12 sporting a very bright display, who knows, someone may want to use that as their primary on-camera monitor. Though of course, a dedicated onboard monitor will perform better than a smartphone. It's still great to have the option. 
I just really wish it was built into the body. There are a few different breakout boxes that are currently available for the Komodo. Red have their expander module, which uses the Komodo's EXT port to give you a four pin control port, a timecode BNC, GPI via BNC, and Genlock via BNC. It mounts directly onto the bottom of the camera to try and keep the form factor as compact as possible. Physically, it's pretty well put together. It has a bunch of mounting options all over it, and it's compatible with the GDU 80mm touch and go plate. It also gives you 238 threads on the bottom of it to mount it onto a tripod plate. This gives you better spacing for tripod plates than the quarter inch and 38 threads on the bottom of the camera. However, I do think there are some better options for this, which we'll take a look at now. Run and Camera have made a version of the B box for the Komodo. This mounts onto the right hand BP slot and connects via the attached short EXT cable. You then have three pin run stop, five pin time code, four pin control, a five volt USB output and a BNC for Genlock. This is probably the most compact option out of all of the available breakout options. For people not wanting to use an integrated VLOC solution, this could be a really nice compact little setup. However, it could also work really well with Wooden Camera's VLOC plate, which we'll look at in part three of our Komodo accessory series. Tilter will also be releasing their advanced power distribution module, and this will slot onto the back of the Komodo using both BP slots and will give you a rotatable VLOC or gold mount plate. The plate will also have a range of inputs and outputs. When it comes to power outputs, you have two 14.8 volt DTAP ports, two 14.8 volt two pin LIMO ports, and a single five volt USB port. Along the right, you then have a three pin RS port for start stop, five pin time code, four pin control, and a BNC connector for Genlock. We haven't got a price for this yet, but this could be a good option for those people picking up Tilter's rig for the Komodo. Up next, we have the Horseshoe IO top plate from Modern Film Tools. This top plate connects to the Komodo using the short EXT cable that comes with it. It then gives you a 5 pin timecode input, 3 pin run stop and a 4 pin red control. It functions well as a top plate as it features lots of mounting points and options. It also works with the revolver from Kipatai as well as the GDU Timmy ribs and monitor mount. There are two versions available, one with a set of rosettes and one without which is more affordable. If you pick up the rosette version, you need to be careful of what side ribs you use alongside it as the rosettes can clash, for example with the 8 sin. However, if you don't need the rosettes, the one without it is far more compatible with other rigging and obviously is more affordable. Lastly, we have the newest option which is the Mutiny IO. This little box is red certified, features a timecode, genlock, run stop and camera control and looks to give plenty of flexible mounting options. We haven't seen this one in person yet, but I'm interested to get our hands on it. So that was the first part of our how to upgrade the Red Komodo series. Our next episode will be about lenses and adapters. And then our last episode will be focused around batteries, media, monitoring and audio. We hope this video has helped you understand some of the rigging options available for your camera. But if you'd like some more tailored advice when it comes to your kit, don't hesitate to get in contact with us via the details below. Let us know what other content you'd like to see about the Komodo and what your dream Komodo rig is in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.